Good morning, this is Kelly Land on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. A 35-year-old man is behind bars facing two counts of arson. Authorities say Marion Brooks tried starting a relative central Sioux Falls home on fire twice Monday morning. The first time investigators say Brooks tried to start a rug on fire outside of the home on South Euclid Avenue and took off. Two hours later, police say the back of the house was engulfed in flames. One person got out of the home before crews arrived. Firefighters had to rescue a second person. No one was hurt. Brooks made his first court appearance yesterday afternoon in Sioux Falls. The judge called him a danger to the community and set bond at $50,000 cash. A 25-year-old man is behind bars accused of trying to shoot police. Authorities say around 3 a.m. Sunday, the man fired a gun into the air in a parking lot near 12th and Duluth, just west of downtown. He then walked to 14th and Minnesota, where officers found him. Police say the man pointed the gun at officers, but the firearm jammed and he threw it aside. The gun was found nearby. Officers also found a small amount of marijuana and meth on him. Police arrested Keenan Eagle Deer for aggravated assault against law enforcement, a weapons violation, and drug charges. The Sioux Falls School District says someone has been arrested in connection with a threatening photo posted on social media. In a message to families and staff member, the district says police in a neighboring school district investigated a threatening photo that did not originate in Sioux Falls. Sunday night, parents in the Harrisburg School District received an alert regarding a message made towards the high school. Officials say parents should encourage students to not forward the photo and report it to school officials. Crews from multiple departments were called to a dairy near Ortley, South Dakota for a fire Monday morning. Grant County Emergency Management says it happened around 6 a.m. at Lakeside Dairy. Officials say a tractor and feed shed caught fire. Firefighters from Summit, Wabe, and South Shore were able to stop the fire from spreading to a nearby hay shed. Crews remained on scene to help deal with burning feed product. Now let's get a check of our morning forecast with meteorologist Brian Karstens. Good morning, Brian. All right, good morning. As we watch our weather here today, well, we're staying dry, and boy, that's been a trend. Look at the 30-day rainfall averages. A percentage of normal peer basically next to nothing. It's down now down to 7%, and uh, even Sioux Falls is dropping a little bit, you know, and we've got a lot of areas of the Northeast that have been dry now for quite a while. So with that kind of uh, in the back of our minds, dry air usually can heat up a little bit better, but it also can cool down very quickly. And we're going to see that effect here tonight after daytime highs today, only in the 60s, Sioux Falls area, uh, middle to upper 60s, pretty good bet. I expect we will have some 30s and patchy frost by tomorrow morning, especially in places like Watertown and Marshall. And we'll dis discuss more on that coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Brian. One peer nurse has made the journey back to her home country of Ukraine to help with the war effort. Since the Russian invasion of Ukraine earlier this year, Natalia Rizek has worked to find a way to help her beloved home country. Now she's back with her family in western Ukraine. She says things have been difficult in Ukraine, and one thing that has become a constant is air raid sirens. The most I heard was five times per day. So, and I kind of noticed, and I even asked Dad, I said, kids are still playing outside. I said, what is going on? And he said, oh, they just get used to it. They just, you know, they'll go home eventually, you know, and I just could not understand. For me, that was quite eye-opening, but for them, you know, it's been over six months. Rizek had been collecting donations of money and medical supplies before her trip and has been working to get all of those donations to the front lines. Today brings a chance to vote on a bond issue in the Harrisburg School District. If it passes, it would pay for a new elementary school and other improvements. One of the things that we'd be looking at doing is uh, if there's enough dollars, depending upon how the bids come in, is to put a track at South Middle School. We've had about 120 track athletes at South this past year uh, that they've been presently using the uh, track at Harrisburg High School for a number of years, as well as a, another bus garage. Polls are now open and go and are open until 7 o'clock tonight. Rodeo fans saddle up for the biggest rodeo event ever to come to Sioux Falls. The Governor's Cup is part of the Cinch Rodeo Playoffs. It will have over a $1 million purse. It's also a chance for the competitors to qualify for the National Finals Rodeo. 
So there's a lot of excitement that's going to come with this rodeo and a lot of life-changing opportunities. And uh, we felt Sioux Falls was, was the best place to host this event. The Governor's Cup will be held September 28th through the 30th of 2023. The Sioux Falls Area Humane Society has more than 500 animals in its care right now. From food to medication, it takes more than $7,000 a day to care for them. There's a way for the community to help the shelter with its mission this weekend. The annual Bark in the Park is happening Saturday morning at Pasley Park. Activities include a 3K and 5K. Registration starts at 8.30. Participants will take off at 10 a.m. The expansion of our news programming has Kelloland Media Group expanding our weather staff as well. Megan Chatta is our new meteorologist on First Step 4. Megan comes from Letcher, South Dakota, where she grew up watching the weather with her grandpa on his farm. I grew up watching Jay and Scott and Brian pretty much my entire life. So I, I was kind of starstruck that when I interviewed in the first week or so I worked here. Megan says storms scared her when she was a kid, and she hopes to be a calming voice for viewers when severe weather hits. And that's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Carstens. Brian? All right. Hey, we welcome Megan here, and you'll get to see her again today uh, with Adam at first of four. And uh, probably talking a little bit about a little frost tonight for a few of you. I'll let you be uh, the, the judge on what you want to do if you want to cover up a few things. If you live in some of these outlying areas north and east of Sioux Falls, you can see after these highs when we're only in the 60s during the day, yeah, you kind of know where we're going next here with that clear sky, light wind. We will see some 30s, uh, pretty likely daybreak tomorrow morning. We're forecasting about 32 in Spencer, Iowa, but uh, Marshall and Watertown, probably not far off from that mark. In the middle of Sioux Falls, typically, you're going to be a little warmer. Heat, uh, urban heat island effect will be there, but uh, you can get on the outskirts of the city, and it'll be pretty chilly. That's it for 30s. For a while, we start a warming trend tomorrow. We're going to kick up a southerly wind and likely going to see uh, milder numbers into the first part of October. 65 today in the Brookings area, 73 in Rapid City. Your seven-day forecast in the 70s. Right there we go into the weekend. Are we going to get any rain this weekend? I would say for Sioux Falls, at most, 20% chance. And that all hinges, of course, on the remnants of this hurricane hitting Florida. Because what's going to happen is that system's going to slowly go up the east coast, or at least into the southeast part, part of the country. And it's going to stall the patterns. And I've already seen plenty of evidence to support this system coming out of Wyoming slowing down. So I'm more inclined to just kind of keep... Uh, the same weather going, the 70s, lows in the 50s. And if we get any rain in Pier and Rapid, I would expect Rapid City to be a little bit better player on this one by the start of the weekend. And what we may end up doing here as we introduce rain chances Friday, Saturday, they may stick around a little longer in the Black Hills. So keep watching for updates on that. And, of course, check out our Storm Center update online at kettleland.com.